interestingly enough, we were talking about job happiness. I was happier, I used to work at Whole Foods. Um, it's a grocery store. I was happier working in a grocery store before I went to college than, uh, than I was with the jobs I had after college. So that goes to show the types of companies for some reason that I ended up working for. Um, so after that, I had, a, I had a college roommate that I went to school with. His name is uh, Brian Aragon, actually. And he, he lived in the Bay Area in a town called Alamo, not too far away from San Francisco. And we would always talk, you know, after college, I would have my, my terrible job I didn't like, and he would tell me about stuff that he was doing. And we talked on the phone, and he said, you know, we, we came up with this idea of, wouldn't it be interesting if we both moved into San Francisco and tried to get jobs there? And I thought, oh, that's crazy. You know, I don't know anybody in San Francisco. And he said, well, my family lives near San Francisco. Why don't you come live with us for a little while, and we'll both look for jobs in San Francisco. So one day, I took all of my clothes, threw it in my car with all of my stuff, and drove up. From L.A.? From L.A. And my family said, oh, you're crazy. It's the most expensive city. Like, what are you, you know, you know my parents were very worried. They thought I was losing my mind. <laughs> so I threw all my clothes in the car, all of my stuff, and I drove up in my Nissan Maxima to Brian's house. And I think I lived there for probably two, three months. And then we both looked for a job in San Francisco. And I found a job there, and he found a job there. And so we, we moved. And we got an apartment there, and we continued to live together. And he worked for his company, I worked for my company, and we would both, every day, wake up at eight o'clock, I would walk to my company, he would walk to his company, and I hated my job. Every morning I would wake up and I would think, oh my God, like, I, you know, I would get that feeling in my stomach of like, oh, I, I don't want to go to work. And I had a similar experience there where people just told me what to do, you know, nobody cares about your opinion, just shut up and, and do what you're told. And, um, after that, I started finding jobs online. So while I had my full-time job, I was also looking for jobs on the side, on, on websites like Craigslist. And these were marketing jobs. Um, I was doing search engine optimization at the time, which is how do you get websites to rank higher in Google and, and Yahoo, et cetera. And so I would try to find these jobs on the side. So I had a full-time job and I had side jobs. And when my side jobs made enough money so that I could pay my rent, I quit my full-time job. Mm -hmm. And from there, really, I used social media to build a personal brand for myself. So over the past 10 years, I created a, a blog where I wrote about stuff. I became active on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And I was just all the time just creating content and building and building and building. So similar to the way that you, you build a house you know, with your hands, you build a foundation, I was doing that online. I was building my digital house. And for many years, I would just create content, and I would speak at conferences for free. And I would just be everywhere I could possibly be. Subject, issues that you so were the, dealing with at that time? At the time, it was a lot of um, marketing. So this, was, oh, okay. this was before Facebook was popular, before Twitter was popular. It was, uh, it was doing online marketing stuff. Okay. And at the time, social media became popular, so I naturally gravitated to social media. And I started to write, uh, write a lot about how to use social media, you know, giving advice on Twitter and Facebook, uh, videos, stuff like that. And then after that, the next stage was a lot of companies were using social media inside. Things like um, you know, internal collaboration tools, internal social networks, just for the employees. And I started writing about that and talking about that and speaking about that. And then it became more on the future of work. So it just kind of evolved and evolved. Mm -hmm. But I'm a big believer in fake it till you make it, right? So the, if you were to look at my life sort of in, in detail, you would see I wasn't making much money. Uh, I didn't have a lot of business contacts. And I was just kind of this struggling young kid. And you did not have a, a defined plan or project. Nope. Yet. You were moving, looking for something. Yep. Constantly moving around. And, you know, my friends knew. They said, oh, you know, Jacob's not working for anybody, but it doesn't look like he's doing that well. You know, I was, I was a struggling young kid. 
But in my mind, I was saying, oh, I'm this young entrepreneur, I'm building this life for myself that I want to live. And every day I would tell myself, like, you know, I don't have to work for anybody, so that's a good step in the right direction. And I just kept telling myself that and telling myself that, and I basically faked it until I made it, if that makes any sense. And, um, and then it just kind of evolved. And as I started, you know, I, I worked like a, like a crazy person, right? I mean, I was up till two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, writing articles, um, finding any job that I could on Craigslist. I mean, nonstop. I'd go to meetups, I would go to events, I would just literally anything I could do, I was doing it nonstop. And then slowly, opportunities started to come up, right? Slowly, I started to get projects. Slowly, somebody said, oh, you know, you should write a book. And I said, oh, okay. And uh, I was given the opportunity to write a book. And then I was approached, uh, I got a column for Forbes. And then I started to get speaking opportunities, and I would be able to charge for speaking. And then it just kind of more and more, and as it continued to build the house, more things came on top of that, and more things on top of that. So it was just... That first book was about what? So my first book was, <laughs> it's a funny name, it's called Twit Faced. And it's, uh, it was about social media. It came out in 2009. And it was, it, was a, it was a very small book, paperback book, small publisher that most people have never heard of. And that book was about how do you use social media. My first sort of, I guess you could call it a real book with a real established publisher came out in 2012. That was around collaboration. How do you use these technologies to get people to work together inside your company? And then after that, I wrote The Future of Work, which came out in 2014. And then after that, I wrote The Employee Experience Advantage, which came out this year, earlier this year. And it's, it's still, you know, every, every year I try to do something that makes me uncomfortable that I haven't done the year before. Athena and I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more content like that, check out futureofworkpodcast.com. And do me a favor, please review the podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever your preferred channel is. Thank you very much.